that we normally make, but you know, that's the life of the tournament. And uh, you know, these guys did well. We, we played a chess game, obviously with Hawes and, and Koof. Um, when to go small, when to attack. Um, we wanted to attack Robbie Hummels just because on the offense end, we wanted to take away his legs. And you know, our big, our big groups, and um, you know, that's something he's not used to. So um, I thought we did a great job of executing the game plan, and, and these guys, they came with it. Um, you were talking about wanting to get, you know, with Robbie. Jeff was kind of, I mean, Jeff was kind of going ahead in the post. And Jeff, I mean, Jeff had a great game, too. I guess just how important was he to doing that, you know, defending Robbie, and then also just how important was he kind of in the second quarter. I mean, Gibbs is huge. I mean, I mean that literally and figuratively. Like, he's huge <laughs> for us, you know. Um, he's he's a strong big that can, he can literally shoot, he can shoot the ball, but he just chooses not to sometimes. But, um, He's a guy that we like to go to, and we're not afraid to go to him. And, and the game, like I said, the game plan was to go at Robbie and try to take his legs on the offense end as our defensive, uh, as our defensive game plan. And it obviously it worked. Do you want to ask about kind of the roster, how you guys put it together? And uh, it seems to me you're a little deeper at the guard position maybe than you've been in, in this thing a couple times. When you're bringing like Lenzel and uh, Keyshawn and some other guys in as that third wave even, you're able to maybe, I mean, maybe play a little deeper, better throughout the entire game, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the goal. Um, I, was, I was sold on um, getting four bigs, actually five, if you count Lighty. He does a little bit of everything, one through five. Um, but I, I wanted to shore up the guard spot. I wanted to shore up the guard spot and make sure that, you know, we have options um, all the way through, depending on the game plan. And I thought, like I said, the guys did great. Keyshawn Woods played some of the best basketball they, that we could have at that moment um, in the second half. So we did a great job, and, and guys are finding a great way to win. Two games in, how would you evaluate where you guys are at, how you guys are playing? You feel like you know, you're know you on track for where you should be? Yeah, for sure. Um, offensively, we just miss shots that we normally make. And then defensively, we're doing everything impossible to, to stop people from scoring. I mean, I thought we did a great job. We're, we're switching great. Um, John came in, played some huge minutes at the four, um, which really creates problems, especially with his shooting ability. Um, and, you know, Costa does does what Costa does, and, and that, that helps us out big time. So, I mean, our, our group of guys are really honing in on the game plan and understanding what we need to do to win a million dollars. William and John, both you guys had a big third quarter offensively. Kind of how big was that to kind of uh, start making more shots there in the third quarter after kind of a sluggish first half? Um, I feel in the first half, we were getting great shots. We just wasn't hitting them. So we just told ourselves to, you know, everybody's encouraging everybody to have time to come on the third quarter, keep shooting your shots. And um, we kept shooting them. And those are the shots that we was getting in the first half. We just happened to knock them down in the third and second half. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, I mean, you can make miss shots, but defensively we did an incredible job, especially in the first half. You know, Jared talked about Key and, and Lenzel as well. And those guys gave us great minutes and energy off the bench. Um, defensively, they were very active, and that was a physical game. It was a physical Big Ten basketball game, so I think it was fun for a lot of people. It was a lot of fun. We got a lot of respect for those guys. I wanted to ask you about the physicality. I, it's Purdue. You guys have done it many times. Did you talk about it beforehand, and was it what you expected? I mean, during the game, I think we just – I mean, that's that's how both teams play. That's how we played in college, you know. Um, we have a lot of respect for those guys. So I was, I was said it during the game. I was like, man, I'm sure Coach Dockett and Paul called the game. We're just like, this is just an old school Big Ten yeah. basketball game. We man. play and like that every summer. Yeah. We don't call fouls at the yeah. gym. So kind of it was to it, but it was fun, though. Like it was a lot of fun, man. And like I said, we got nothing but respect for those guys. You know, we played against most of them in college. So we had a lot of fun. Hope the, hope the fans had fun watching it. You guys are down two at the end of, toward the end of the first quarter, and then Evan Ravenel has a couple of big baskets and a big play on, on the defensive side. Just what kind of lift did you get from Evan during those minutes? I mean, if you look, like I said, if you look across our roster, we got a lot of people that can start on any other TBT team, but they come off the bench. And uh, I mean, that's that's the key. Is you know, our starters started off with great energy on the defensive end, and then our bench they have to take it into another level. I mean, with Evan Ravenel kind of being in a similar role that we he was when we won went to the final four, excuse me. Um, he knows what he needs to do every time he steps out on the floor. Evan's minute, minutes was huge. Lenzel's minutes was huge. John's minutes was huge. Um, Julian Mavanga's minutes have been huge. Um, his, he gives us a little advantage being able to 
run the pick and roll and let John set the screen and slip out and stuff like that. Um, just like like I said, our bench, you can put them on any other TBT team and they're going to start. Um, and the guys, they don't have an ego. That's what makes it so easy to coach these guys is nobody has an ego. Everybody putting their input. I'm willing to listen. I don't know everything. This, this is only my third time doing it. And so uh, these guys have done a really good job of just um, not only helping me, but helping the team and, and kind of finding our chemistry as quick as possible. The fact that we haven't even had to mention Aaron, does that just speak to how, how much depth there is? I mean, Aaron is Aaron. You know, he's always going to change the game no matter how, how how little he plays, how much he plays. He plays at one pace and one pace only. And um, that just shows, like you said, how deep we are. You know, I go with Keyshawn sometimes at the point guard spot. And then right after Keyshawn, here comes Aaron. So, like, it's just a – it's a constant change of pace at guard at the guard play that you have to be you have to be worried about. You know, we got a posting guards with Dave and, and Will, but they also can knock down the three at any given moment. I mean, it's just we're we're hard to guard. And Julian's probably not a guy with a lot of five state big ten fans we're familiar with. How did he kind of come to be a part of, of this group? Um, honestly I reached out to him and I just watched how he played in, in over there in um, Japan and I just thought that was a good dynamic that we we need to have, especially with all the shooters that we have. His ability to get into the lane, and he's he's a willing passer. That's the beautiful part about him. He's a willing passer, and he fits he fits our style of play perfectly.